Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Wednesday, 19th of April. Not many great ideas floating around uh, in my head this morning. Quiet day on the calendar. We have sterling uh, inflation numbers. You know, which uh, on the surface look hysterically high, right? So they're expecting 9.8% down from 10.4 um, but boy that's some uh, that's some inflation we'll be keeping an eye on that uh, watching cable and sterling yen see what happens there but let's first uh, just take a look at Aussie yen we're still long this from yesterday it's a little stale but it's fine right we didn't couldn't quite get below 90 yen uh, after printing a high of 54, we do think equities still have the risk of floating higher, even though yesterday we put in, well, it's more like an indecisive bar, <coughs> but, you know, higher high, higher low. Looked bearish for like five seconds in the day and then just closed where it opened. Um, you know, we just teased the uh, 40, 42 handle with a 41.98 and a quarter print. Um, 4207 or 420850 looks like it has to trade um, before we can resolve anything. And once that trades, the resolution will either be way the fuck higher um, or turn. So let's keep an eye on this uh, 4210. Um, the whole way the fuck higher thing uh, seems uh, incredibly unlikely to us here, but no dog in that fight yet. So we got a little bit of um, Aussie yen. Uh, what else is out there? Let's look at gold. Gold's holding up a little bit better than we thought. Uh, we talked about this 1980 level yesterday. We don't have anything that's going to move U.S. rates today, so we're just sort of sitting around here at 358. Not much to do. We do have European final uh, CPI today, but. It's, it's usually a very unvolatile uh, number. Um, what's going to move gold? I guess tomorrow unemployment claims might have um, m might have some juice. Existing home sales don't really care. I guess it's Friday again, right? So we have all of this manufacturing and services PMI uh, coming out on Friday. Overall, it looks pretty quiet, right? Let's take a look at dollar yen. We took a little visit up to 134.70 yesterday. Um, we talked about this like making a high somewhere between sort of 50 and 135.30. Still plenty of room to do some sort of dance up that way. Uh, the BOJ is a week from this Friday. What if they change policy? I don't know. Um, but also, what if the dollar downtrend resumes? Because um, this dollar uptrend is just a, you know, F you to the longer term dollar downtrade in our, in our opinions. We saw the FT article yesterday where, where according to the CFTC data, all the hedge fund guys are long dollars right now because rates are going higher. For us, that's just great. I mean, we caught that on Friday. We were aware of what was going on. Um, but the overall picture for the dollar, uh, for me, is, is super negative. And because we're short-term traders, we don't really care. We're just up or down. But like I, I do have the idea that, uh, you know, euro's going to 130. Uh, dollar yen's going to go to 105, um, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just see what happens here. Again, this is a pretty useless. Uh, here's the four hours. I mean, you could you could draw this. There'll be a few guys who are a few short term guys who are drawing this. Um, whatever extended. Uh, this sort of little mini head and shoulders now. 
when I first looked at this chart this morning, my knee jerk was like, okay, great. You know, just leave an 85 stop entry, 133.85, with the idea that if we're down at 133.85, something has happened. Uh, and then once you're executed, you make a decision on what the fuck's going on. And if nothing's going on, you just square it. But if something is going on, um, you're in at a decent short, not obviously something on the 134 handle, but based on the calendar, um, you know, we might have some, uh, you know, medium sized shit there. Nothing. We're not going to, we're not going to send it home on a 133.85, uh, entry, but you know, oftentimes when you look at a chart quickly and this is the, whatever the first thing comes to your mind is something that you probably need to trade. So there we are with that. Let's go to our sluggish friend, Dollar Swiss. We're just trading this on the long side. Uh, we're very, very far away um, from really the 05 or 89, the figure, let's say, support. So there's not a lot to do at 89.70 unless you're core long and trading it, which is what we're doing. This sort of 50, 60 area seems to be holding, but again, it's not super strong technically, or there's no real reason it should hold. So we're just being flexible. Um, and while US rates are, while the tens are above sort of 355, we're going to keep this mentality where um, dollar Swiss has gone too far and looking to buy this. Euro Swiss. Same type of mentality. Is the European CPI going to come in hot and push this higher? I don't know. Um, is the elephant in the room just trying to kill volatility in Euro Swiss, like we talked about yesterday? Uh, we think that is the case. Um, what's going to break Euro Swiss out of this like vol volatility slumber? No fucking idea. Um, now that I've said this out loud, why are you even trading Euro Swiss? There's actually no good reason. Euro Sterling, we got this CPI in an hour's time. Again, not really sure what to do with this. It's just kind of stuck in the middle. Let's go to Sterling Cable or Sterling and Cable here. This comes in super hot. I would normally say, if, if it wasn't a CPI number, I would normally say this is a sell at 124.70. This is what we wrote on Sunday night. Never really got close to it yet. But if this cable comes in scorch as a scorcher, we won't fade it. Um, we'll probably just sort of do nothing for now. Uh, all eyes are on this uh, 125.50 level. This 125, 25, 125, 37, 125, 50. I guess, you know, through 50 with a with a 20 stop is going to pay one of these days. Is today going to be that day? I don't think so. Um, but anyway, sterling numbers are coming out. Sterling yen, unlike the other yen crosses, we're still... <laughs> Euro yen is, is 100 points from significant, significant highs. Swiss yen is 100 points or 150 points from the all time high. Sterling yen is not 600 points from what you would call a significant high. But this is rarefied air um, for sterling yen. And in my career, I can, I can think, I, I can remember so many conversations with my prime broker just sitting there on a day just like today where nothing the fuck is going on and all of a sudden we got nothing to do so we're taking big picture looks at this and I don't trade options much but it's always the same thing I'm like Jesus sterling yen's around 170 we should really just buy like a nine month 150 put um, and then occasionally we'll price it up and whatnot and just talk about it and whatever or I'm just like shit I should just be core short spot um, with like sort of a sloppy wide one where the risk reward blows but we're we're at one of those points it seems like if you look at sterling yen um, you know this thing lives between 150 and 
125. Um, you know, we'll exclude uh, 2017. So for the last sort of six years, let's go to the monthlies. What the hell was that? Was why was Sterling in up there? One ninety six, twenty fifteen. Is that is that cable? Can't even remember. Jesus. Anyway, um, Sterling in. I'm just babbling. Look, I don't even know why I'm uh, talking anymore. Really, nothing, nothing strong on the books today. It's Patience Day. Go uh, read some Dostoevsky, or go fuck your wife. Um, either way, it's always. Uh, beneficial um Dostoevsky or screwing your wife so pick your pick your poison talk to you guys later ciao